Green's theorem, part one. Assume that the curve C in the plane is a simple, closed, oriented curve with a non-zero tangent vector at each point on the curve. Such a curve has a well-defined interior R, such that when the curve is traversed in the counterclockwise direction, the interior is on the left and the outward normal vector points to the right. We also assume that the curve in the plane lies in a region that is connected and simply connected. Now, let F be a vector field whose components have continuous first partial derivatives in R. Defying circulation, we add up the components of F in the direction of the unit tangent vector at each point on the curve. So circulation measures how much of the vector field points in the direction of the curve. It is easiest to visualize circulation if F represents the velocity of fluid moving in two dimensions. A non-zero circulation on a closed curve says that the vector field must have some property inside the curve that produces the circulation. You can think of this property as net rotation. Imagine a small paddle wheel fixed at a point P in the vector field with its axes perpendicular to the xy plane. The strength of the rotation at P is seen in the speed at which the paddle wheel spins. The direction of the rotation at P is the direction in which the paddle wheel spins. At a different point in the vector field, the paddle wheel will, in general, have a different speed and direction of rotation. The circulation form of Green's theorem relates the circulation on the curve to the double integral over the region of a factor that measures rotation. The factor g partial x minus f partial y of the double integral describes the rotation of the vector field within C that produces the circulation on C. It is called the two-dimensional curl of the vector field. The double integral computes the net rotation of the field throughout the region. The theorem says that the net rotation throughout R equals the circulation on the curve, which is the boundary of R. If the two-dimensional curl of a vector field is zero throughout a region, then the vector field is said to be irrotational, meaning it produces zero circulation on closed curves in the region. Saying that F is an irrotational vector field is equivalent to saying that G partial X equals F partial Y. That is, that the field is conservative. By visual inspection, we can see that this vector field is rotating. Place the paddle wheel anywhere in the region and it will rotate clockwise. In fact, the amount of rotation, negative 2, is the same at any point. I also want to point out that a curl of negative 2 is consistent with clockwise rotation. How about this vector field? Find its curl. Curl is negative 2x. What is the curl for all points where the x component is equal to 2? I'm sorry, I meant x equals 4, if you found it for x equals 2. If x equals 4, then curl is negative, indicating clockwise rotation of the paddle wheel. How about for x equals negative 4, and this time I really mean negative 4. Find curl for negative 4. If the x component of a point is negative 4, 
the curl is positive at that point, indicating a counterclockwise rotation of the paddle wheel. Let's find circulation using Green's theorem, where C is the unit circle with counterclockwise orientation, and F is the rotation vector field. Well, the partial derivatives, F partial Y is negative 1, and G partial X is positive 1. So, two-dimensional curl is 2. A non-zero curl indicates a non-zero circulation on the boundary of the region. The curl is a constant value, so the double integral is just the curl times the area of the region. Now, the area of the region is contained by a unit circle, which has an area of pi. As we found in line integrals, the rotation vector field has a circulation of 2 pi on the boundary of the unit circle. This concludes part 1. I'll, I will see you again in part 2.